Myasthenia gravis, finding strength one day at a time. This video series is brought to you by Conquer Myasthenia gravis, who's been serving MG patients since 1972. In today's broadcast, host Sarah Bolton, resilience coach and rare disease advocate, talks with Alicia Angel of New York City. Please keep in mind, each person's experience with MG is unique. The information in this video reflects one person's story. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. Finally, we wish to thank our supporters, Argenix, Alexian, and Jansen. Hi there and welcome. I'm Sarah Bolton and this is Alicia Angel. And today we're gonna to be having a conversation for our interview series called Myasthenia Gravis, Finding Strength One Day at a Time. And this is a very special guest with us today, um, Alicia is actually one of the first people that I connected with after I was diagnosed with MG. And Alicia and I have stayed connected and uh, become friends through our yeah. both of our journeys with MG. So that's right. Thanks for being here, Alicia. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so prior to MG, what was your life like? just so we can have a little bit of an idea. Um, before MG, I was like traveling, doing music, you know, um, basically that, <laughs> you know, like it was pretty good. You know, we're, you know, kind of working a lot on different projects and, um, be, you know, being creative and, and just kind of always on a plane, good times. <laughs> And then MG came and I was like, oh, <laughs> well, this isn't how I planned it, but <laughs> here we I are. I think that's what, one of the things that really <laughs> attracted me to you uh, was uh, you sharing about, you know, working as a singer and songwriter and working in music and even doing some acting. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually started as an actor, like uh, as a kid, <laughs> like, like, when I was five, I, I was auditioning and, you know, I started booking jobs when I was six. So like I always acted, but like music is really where my heart is. Um, and then even like right before I got MG, I was doing like these uh, acting. Okay, so they hire actors to play patients for doctors who are uh, taking licensing exam. So this is for the test prep for it. And uh, they hire us actors and we who are called standardized patients and we play out cases and, you know, grade them on communication skills and things like that and physical exam and so yeah I always kind of like like to keep it all going in some way how funny that is great I love that uh, so how has your lifestyle been impacted by MG so my lifestyle has been impacted um in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, it's like, I can't just pick up and go the way I did. Like I, I used to, like I said, be on a plane a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, people would always call friends or text me and go, Hey, um, I don't know if you're around, like what country you're in right now? <laughs> you know, what city are you in? Cause I was just always gone. I like, you know, I just, uh, my writing partner and I would just feel a little depressed so we'd go to the Bahamas <laughs> like you know we just we were always in Asia doing um music you know because a contract out there like a, a publishing deal um and for the Asian market with Universal and so we do a lot of stuff in uh, Taiwan and you know for Chinese artists and you know in Korea um so it's uh it's just a lot different I mean I'm home a lot um I've had to learn to get used to being at home and and um keep myself occupied that way i'm just i don't love um it's gonna sound so annoying but i don't love like tv not because i do watch some i said that i don't watch it at all it's just that i don't i've always liked to be the entertainer not be entertained it's like i like to do things that are creative i like to work on projects as opposed to like as opposed to just watching something right um I'm trying to think about oh, what can I create to be a show you know so um so it does make it difficult with MG to because they don't have um the 
st uh, the strength though is to to work such long hours. I mean, when I was doing music, like before, I was um, it, I would be in the studio all day. I mean, I would be doing these these sessions are very demanding sometimes to record um, songs. It it's a lot. It takes a lot out of me physically and, and emotionally and men mentally, um, and it, it's a lot. So uh, it's just it's just not. I, I can't. I can't do it the way I could before for sure, but I'm finding ways to still get stuff done, stuff done. Yeah, I, I know you to be very resilient and I'm curious if there are some resources or supportive uh, things that have helped you that you, would, you wouldn't mind sharing. Yeah, I started working with a physical therapist. Um, she also does kind of like OT, um, her name is, um, uh, Liz Plowman, and um, she is MG as well, so she really gets it. So I started working with her, and she's incredible. I mean, you know, she she even just little things like they'll get a stool to put in the kitchen, um, so that you can do that. You use that for the dishes or cooking or um, chopping something up, you know, and making something. And honestly, that has been so helpful. I was super resistant to things like like shower chair and things like that, but let me tell you something, like. I highly recommend it. Like once, um, once I got that, I was just like, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. It's just so helpful. And, and so I just feel like, you know, finding things like that, that can make our lives a little easier. Like even um, getting a vanity from my room so that I can ease better. Um, it, it can do my hair and makeup a little easier and it's, it's less exhausting for me. Um, a lot of things like that. I got my eyebrows microbladed so that um, I didn't have to um, do them every day because that was something that would bother me to not have them. But then once they're done, now I, that's one last thing that I have to physically do and that will exhaust me. So there's tons of things like that. If you really look around um, your world, you can find uh, little ways to make that easier. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah. Speaking of, you know, supportive things that can make our lives easier, how do you uh, stay positive despite the challenges of MG? You know, it's not always easy. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, and I'm, I try to be careful not to, to be positive, but to not do tox, po uh, toxic positivity thing. Um, just because I think that can be damaging and it can, um, I, I, I never want to take away from anyone's experience and the fact that, I mean, MG really can be hard. So I don't ever want to make it seem like, oh, this is just easy. Everything's fine. I'm always positive. I'm always happy because I'm not. And I think that, um, when we when we do that too much it starts to make people who are not um people who are able-bodied sometimes can um expect that of us and expect that we're always um that way and it when you're chronically ill it's just not realistic or sustainable to just always be so positive and happy but with that being said i do my best to do that because i actually suffer from um a history i have a history of depression and i will you know, I can easily slip into that space. And so I really do my best to try to do little things like stay grateful and stuff like that, but also um, use my support system and make sure I stay connected with people, especially I mean, during a pandemic where a lot of us are quite isolated. That was super helpful and important to me to, even when I don't feel like connecting with someone, doing it anyway, you know, getting on the call, a call with someone, if I'm, I'm kind of feeling down, just kind of picking a person in my life that I feel like might be the best for that conversation at that moment. And just kind of be like, Hey, like, oh, this is what's going on. And sometimes that'll do the trick for me or, um, you know, reminding myself on the bad days that, um, there are good days and there, that it's not always going to be that way. And reminding myself of how far I've come. Um, because there was definitely a period where I was really struggling hard and there are going to be more periods like that. And I try to remember my mind myself of that too, that, you know, it's not like I'm in remission. So I, there's definitely, I have to be prepared for that too. Sometimes there are going to be, you know, bad MG days and, but they're not going to last forever. And 
kind of reminding myself of that helps. And also um, a friend of mine had given me a suggestion once um, to, um, to make a video on, cause I, I, I had a, a really good day and this had come after, well, a decent day. And it came after me having like a really, like a, long, a little string of really bad days. Um, and where I was really kind of losing hope and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. It's like, sometimes it gets so bad where you're just like, I can't, oh my God, I can't do one more day of this. Like, this is like, it's torture, you know? And when I'm like in a really bad, like exacerbation or something, and he said, okay, you're, you're doing so good today. Cause I remember saying, oh, I'm like, I feel good. Like, this is great. Like, you know, and you know, I can do this. I did this. I was able to do this today, but I couldn't do it the other days. And he said, okay, I need you to take a video of yourself and, you know, of yourself right now and talking of everything you just said to me, telling me about the good day you had and how you feel good after feeling horrible for like however long, a week or whatever it was. He's like, do that and then send it to me. And I'm going to send you that on the days that you feel um, help, um, hopeless, the days that you feel like this is so bad and it's never going to get better. I'm going to send you this to remind you that it does. And mm-hmm. I want you, you know, I want you to be able to play that. And, um, and I he was that. right. It was a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. He's a smart yeah. one. <laughs> Thank so. you so much. That's such a great idea. I need to take a video of myself on a good day. Yeah. Highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> yeah, it's because and it's coming from you because you know sometimes people can go oh well don't you know it'll get better oh you'll be fine and I'm like you don't know you're not in this body like you know and so sometimes it's harder even though they might be right it's hard to hear it from someone else sometimes because they're like you don't really know you know but I think um coming from myself you know right like who better than the person actually dealing with it so mm-hmm. I uh yeah and then also just connecting with the, the groups like I had told you in the beginning um, has, have been really helpful for me connecting with other people who get it because unfortunately everyone in my life is not going to get MG or even the ones that do, they're not going to get it on that level because they don't experience it the same way that I didn't get it before I had it. I wouldn't have, if someone brought it to me, I didn't know, I didn't even know about MG then, but if someone had been experiencing it, I would try to have as much empathy as possible but I really wouldn't have had a real idea of what, of what it's like. And so it's, it's definitely helpful to have that community. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, thank you so much, Alicia, for being with us. Uh, yeah, if there are people out there who are listening and who would like to connect with you further, how could they get in touch? I think the best way would be to get me on Instagram. So follow me there. It's um, it's Alicia at it's Alicia Angel, and um, yeah, that's where all the all the magic happens. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I do post a lot about MG when I'm you know going through something. I try I try to be really honest, you know, transparent about my experience. So yeah, yeah. Connect with me there. I'm friends with a tons of um, of MGers on there. Yeah, I think that's where we originally connected. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we will see you folks next time for our next interview series. Thank you so much. To learn more about Myasthenia Gravis, to make a donation, or to support the work of Conquer MG, please visit us at www.myastheniagravis.org.